Okay, so we'll start with this discussion on what is the motivation for designing accelerators for AI? So, uh, cognitive computing is very, very costly. So, if you if you have heard about you know some of the uh, famous famous neural networks beginning from beginning with LXNet and then there is very recently this AlphaGo. So, just like I guess in uh, I think in 1996 there was this uh, IBM's supercomputer which defeated I think, uh, Gary Kasparov. Similarly, you know, uh, Alpha Alpha Go defeated World Champion on uh, Go, right? Which is uh, Go is similar to chess. So, in, in going from uh, Alpha, going from AlexNet to Alpha Go, the so this is the uh, training. That means if if you if you want to if you want to train. If you want to train a neural network, how much computation is required? So between LXNet to AlphaGo, there has been almost three lakh times increase in the amount of computation power you need for training a neural network, right? So that means over a time, although we now have more accurate or more powerful, you know, neural networks, but the amount of power you need to train them is also very very high. Here is another very, very, you know, interesting, you know, uh, statistics. So this is the amount of carbon footprint in terms of how many pounds of CO2 equivalent uh, is, is, is released. If you make one round trip for one passenger between New York to San Francisco, it takes this much uh, units of, you know, carbon footprint. Uh, a human life average for one year, it takes this much carbon footprint. American life is more than three times of that. And a US, US car over its whole lifetime consumes this much carbon footprint. But if you if you train a you know transformer which has this many parameters, using if you if, if uh, you know uh, find it using neural architecture such, it takes so much amount of carbon footprint. So that means you know because it takes so much amount of computations it also translates into so much amount of you know uh, power consumption and carbon footprint so uh, and then if you want to go for lower error rate it also takes more amount of training time so here we he are showing that last two networks have long training times so if you see resnet 18 so resnet is a is a neural network designed by Microsoft. And depending on the number of layers they have, they have ResNet 18, 15, 101, 152, and so on. So if you, if you go to deeper neural networks, they have lower error rate, but it also takes immense amount of time to train those neural networks. Okay. So now you know how much how much time can you wait, right? You 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 start it for uh, you know for keep, keep it for training especially in india like you know between this much time uh, suppose 10 to 11 days some power break will power cut will happen and it may happen that your server may restart and your training may get lost you know your progress may be lost so this is completely you know um, it's not always possible to tolerate this much high amount of training time you want probably this much or or, or less if possible so how do we keep the error rate low without Increasing the training time a lot, right? So this, these are the these are the motivation we have. So uh, uh, so that's why actually, given this huge amount of com you know compute requirement which neural networks have, we definitely need efficient computing systems for them. So here you see two two distinct eras of compute usage in training AI systems. So if you if you remember you know new, this the whole hype or the whole idea of AI was originally started in 1960s. Then there was some winter time where there was not much progress. Then after 2011 or 12, there was rapid progress in this area, right? I mean, why? Because before GPUs arrived, people were using CPUs and using CPUs. 
the training was so slow that you could not train bigger networks and the networks which you could train had very poor accuracy okay so it was not much useful to you know even you know uh, train those networks so that's why there was uh, the interest in neural network was fading or, or interest in machine learning or ai in general was fading but once gpus arrived and gpus provided immense computing power and that's why after that there has been so much you know quick turn around time you could now you can train the neural network in just few days very very deep neural network very very highly accurate neural networks or other other, other ai algorithms so that's why and those those networks have very high you know uh, accuracy on, on on different different tasks so that's why uh, computing systems are highly required for fueling the growth of ai so computing systems have fueled the growth of ai you may have a very very you know fancy very highly accurate neural uh, or ai algorithm but if it takes you know one month to get trained who will even use it okay so improvements in deep learning algorithms have gone hand in hand with the improvements in hardware accelerators unless you have very efficient computer architectures your progress in deep learning algorithms also will be slow our ability to train increasing complex ai models and achieve low power real time inference depends on capability of computing systems that means if your computing systems are slow you cannot train very complex ai models or they will consume huge amount of power so i'll give you an example suppose uh, one example is you want to use one uh, ai algorithm for a, on, on a traffic junction to find out whether someone is wearing helmet okay or whether someone is having name plate in, incorrectly or, or or someone is doing traffic violation so best is that your your training your ai algorithm should be able to just subsist on probably solar power so that it doesn't take any amount of uh, even even a battery and it should do the analysis in real time it should find out in real time who is doing traffic violation and uh, it should it should you know immediately uh, give, give him or her a ticket so if your algorithm is very very power consuming who who will use it because the budget to op op operate that please mute your So your voice isn't clear. Hello. Okay. So my my voice is not clear. Sir, it's now it's okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, please let me know if if my voice is any time breaking. Please let me know. I will. Okay. So I was discussing that uh, if if you are having any. Uh, suppose ai algorithm for you know uh, traffic surveillance it should ideally work in real time and it should also not consume much power otherwise the police or whatever law enforcement agency will find out that is it is it is becoming infeasible to operate it the the whole system if it is becoming bulky it probably it is falling down from the from the pole uh, from the pole that you have posted it then it, it may become unusable right so it is not just the accuracy which you have to think about you have to think about many many metrics it should not be very very costly okay it should not be very bulky i will give some examples of this so that's why you need very very uh, whichever computing system you are using to execute those algorithms they also have to be very very efficient knowledge of computing system can provide invaluable guidance to ai researchers in designing the most efficient and accurate algorithms so the whole point is from other side that means if if you are an ai researcher and if you know on which system is is this algorithm going to run on then you can design very efficient algorithms okay because you can take into account the the limitations or the correct or that you know pros and cons of the systems on which it is running for example if you know that your algorithm is going to run on fpga or if your algorithm is going to run on gpu or maybe a asic then you can design your algorithm accordingly right so uh, here is another example suppose there are some extreme environments such as you know space right or medical or defense so they they are highly mission critical so there you can only use certain systems which have fast uh, you know uh, certifications which which there are certain certification which a system has to pass only then it can be used in suppose you know air aeroplanes or health or defense so so suppose gpu has not passed that test so there is no way you can use gpu for defense or for uh, health 
then all you have is all you have got is probably fpga or cpa then you have to keep that in mind while choosing your algorithm or while designing the algorithm so you know uh, ml stack is very very uh, big we are probably we are mostly focusing on this part okay what are the different accelerators we can think of how to design them how to optimize them but overall it is a very very big stack right first of all beginning with the applications there are different different types of applications now there are many type many different data sets for each for example for for vision there is different data set for object detection for you know natural language processing machine translation now there are different types of models some of them for vision some of them for speech or translation then there are different frameworks i'm sure you must have heard of their name tensorflow pytorch theano uh, graph format that probably we don't directly deal with because this is like uh, hidden inside then there are optimized libraries uh, cuda tuplas openplas igen i'm sure you must have heard of that then there are different operating systems uh, some of them are generic some of them are more specific to you know uh, machine learning like rtos uh, and uh, robot operating system is also there R ros so this is the whole stack and of course we are working at only one portion of the stack but uh, you have to think of interoperability of them now this is a very interesting virtuous cycle of deep learning if you have more amount of data you can design better algorithms and to to be able to execute those better algorithm you need a better computing power and if you have better computing power you are able to generate bigger data and that's why this cycle always keeps on going on it always keeps on you know rotating once you have more compute power with that you can crunch more data and you can come up with better algorithms or better models and to run those models you need more compute so that's why all these industries work in uh, hand in hand so uh, here is an example how in data sets have been increasing for example in 19 uh, 1900 there were some data set criminals then there were iris so this is the data set side number of examples right and then this sports 1m it has uh, so many sports 1m has this much uh, uh, 1 million examples this is wmt machine translation so this has wikipedia machine, machine translation so it has 1 billion examples imagenet has uh, it, it has more than 1 million examples so here you can see the size of data set has been increasing so this is one point we mentioned that bigger data sets are there. and then models are getting larger like for example if you see microsoft uh, this this resnet is from microsoft this alexnet is not from microsoft so in in image recognition domain if you compare alexnet versus resnet it has more number of layers it it performs much more computations it has uh, much less error okay top one error or top five error so similarly if you see in speech recognition deep speech one from bedu versus deep speech two from bedu just in one year the amount of operations they need is has increased so much the amount of data it crunches is so much and the error which is reduced is just 3% error reduction so even to bring small detection in error you need to do now much more computations so that's why models are getting very very big and similarly in the hardware if you see uh, this is the 90 epoch training time and accuracy of resnet 50 for imagenet so if you see hey at all they use 8 p100 gpus whereas they, this work whichever work i'm quoting from this paper they have used 1024 G, uh, gpus whereas u at l they have used 1600 gpus so that means it is not sufficient to even purchase one or two gpus if you want to really train in real time you 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 need you need huge amount of you know compute power so with that they are able to train in 15 minute right so just as you know in 1960 there was a you know race to reach the moon right all the countries were racing similarly nowadays we are seeing that okay i want to have more and more compute power so i want to train i have seen a work which trains alexnet in just 1.5 minute of, of course they have, they are using uh, 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 volta 100 thousands of them so which which means right how much probably uh, crores of rupees so so this is what it takes to train the network 
in a very short amount of time and and reach you know very high accuracy so as i said you can't think of just one one metric okay my my algorithm is very very accurate and it works really fast previously it was just that but now you have to think about many many metrics like what is its energy efficiency for example if you are if you are you know thinking about you know autonomous driving you want to design a car of course probably we, we still doubt whether any autonomous driving car can drive itself in chandni chowk but at least you know in limited constraints like you know patrolling on the border or maybe a very very structured environment like maybe iit roorkee campus or some golf course there of course we can imagine uh, autonomous driving car can drive by itself so there if if your algorithm is taking so much energy then you know how will it run because you cannot keep a car connected with a power with electricity all the time right it has to navigate it has to travel long distance that means it has to run on a battery that means it must have very high energy efficiency similarly reliability security privacy these are extremely important suppose if if i am from a big car manufacturing company and i have designed a autonomous driving car and if you are my competitor and if you can make my car crash then my reputation in the in the market is finished and then you can develop your own car and win the market that's what happened to one of the i think uh, company that their car was uh, their car got into an accident and it killed a human and then many many you know sanctions were placed and so on then what is the model size how much memory does it take and how much compute does it do and what is the weight you may think okay what is the point of weight but i, I will show an example how weight is very very important to consider and how much cost it, it uh, how, what is the cost of doing that computation you need to balance this matrix so previously you know there was a competition which uh, image led competition uh, uh, which only focused on accuracy but nowadays there are competitions such as low power image recognition challenge low power computer vision challenge where the focus is not just to achieve high accuracy or low latency but also to do it with very high energy efficiency that means with very low power consumption so here is an example suppose nowadays drones are highly popular not only for you know defense purposes but even for you know many many civil purposes people are using in fact i think in some of the indian states they have started doing medicine delivery by using drones now if you see this is the power p required to hover an aircraft of mass m with a propeller of radius r so this is the you know equation for that here k equals to some constant g equals to this now if you have a if you have a drone called dji phantom 4 which is one of the popular drones now it it has a mass of this r of this it so that means it requires more than 150 watt of power divided over its four propellers just to hover and assuming you are not keeping any side any you, you are not keeping anything inside the drone it is just drone alone of course you have to keep at least some camera or some other kind of sensor so that it does some recording and so this excludes power required to operate the flight controller and other on board electronics and sensors now now if you see like if you want to keep a raspberry pi or an noc or tx2 uh how much how much extra for each you know each gram of weight you keep it is super linear increase in the power it is not just linear it is uh, raised to power 3 by 2 okay so so that is the whole point you have to carefully you know think uh how much weight does your electronic system or your computing system takes and accordingly the power will increase then you need to keep more heavier battery or your flight duration may reduce like for example some one drone may be there which can fly only for 15 hours or maybe 4 hours and then it has to come back to the ground and so if if it cannot fly for long time that means it cannot do many useful mission it can only do very limited missions similarly many 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 domains high energy efficiencies must for example internet of things mobile systems robotics drone based surveillance so so that means it is not just you know fancy things like computer vision there are many many real life usage for example body implants nowadays they are trying to insert some you know um, uh, implants in the body which will measure some things and do some analysis and or convey the data to the base station so their energy efficiency is very very much because if the if inside the body it is taking huge amount of power then it will give heat to your body it will harm the body cells so here is an example of how memory excesses may cause exceeding the power budget of a mobile system 
so this this is the you know energy consumed by different operations this is the energy consumed by addition multiplication sram read dram read and so on so here you can see dram is the main memory so reading from main memory causes huge amount of energy and similarly air cost is also mentioned here now suppose you have a neural network which has 1 billion connection that means 1 1 uh, into 10 to the power 9 you run it at 20 hertz so if all the all the weights are getting fetched from dram then it takes more than 12 watt just for dram accesses which is beyond the power budget of a mobile device right your mobile device may have a budget of 3 to 5 watts so if you need more than that just to access the memory that means you cannot run this network on your mobile phone you have to run this network either in the desktop or the cloud okay so th th so this way so this is the so that means you you may have a very very fancy neural network but it's just that you cannot run it on a new mobile device so that severely limits its usage okay so at this point i would like to ask if you have any questions Okay, if you don't have, let, let, let us go forward. Uh, sir, sir, Vikas here. Uh, in yes. terms of parameters mentioned, uh, like, uh, could you please tell us the uh, what are the utmost priorities in certain areas, like as per your experience, like as you told, mm -hmm. energy efficiency. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 as you told, energy efficiency is also one such parameter. Like, yes. Can you mention uh, what is the, what are the utmost importance in list of parameters, like? No, no. It, it, all, it all depends on you know. It, it all depends on your use okay. usage domain. For example, yeah. so I give you an example. Like for example, if you see driving an uh, aeroplane, okay. So their reliability is highly important. Your they may use an older CPU, which which probably is not very fast, but it has to be reliable. You can't afford to make a mistake. Okay. Whereas if your main constraint is that your model should run on mobile phone, then it, main constraint is its model size should be small. The number of computation should be small. Okay, and of course privacy. Suppose you have a neural some some AI algorithm which is which is working for banking or financial computations, then it should provide privacy and security. For example, if your medical records are there or if your financial records are there, I should not be able to leak them. So there is a whole research on you know privacy aware deep learning or privacy aware AI. So you can't point out a single metric. That's what the whole point of this is. You can't single out one metric. You have to think about all the matrices. Is that fine? Got it, sir. But in the current industry, where is the huge amount of going into which domain? Like again, you know, the industry is a very very broad term. Actually, if you if you tell me one industry, I can tell or one one application domain, I can tell you probably. Okay, this was this would be their criteria. But in general, it is impossible to tell. For example, there are companies working on just the verification of AI. Then there are companies working on security of AI. Okay, got it. So, so it's not, you know, there, there is never one metric. You know, even cost is never a single metric. Even if you may think, of course, cost may be most from uh, predominating. Uh, a company may decide to, you know, marketize a technology only if it is cost effective. But still, apart from cost, other accuracy, latency, other things also have to be seen. Okay, now, so this was just to, till this point, I had just shown that how neural network computing is or AI computing is very, very costly. Now, one option is okay. Why, so, uh, why do we need to design a special accelerator? Why can't we just use original CPUs or GPUs for them? But the point is, it's not possible to improve performance of general purpose processors by reducing the feature size. We have to design special accelerators. So, what is domain specific accelerator? Let, so, let me explain that. So there is a broad broad category. One is called general purpose. So, for example, we use CPUs. All of us have laptops or desktops where we run CPUs. So CPU is a general purpose. That means you can use it for very, very broad category of tasks. But there is also called domain-specific accelerator. For example, you may have a domain-specific accelerator for you know, computer vision or for speech processing. Okay, or for you know. Uh, Sig you may have some, you know, um, suppose uh, electromagnetic signals or, you know, uh, neuro, you know, ne neurological signals which you are processing. So you may design a spec accelerator which can't do everything in the universe, but just for that task, it is very efficient. 
So they are called domain specific accelerator. That means for just one application or for one domain, it is very, very efficient. So similarly for AI also, we need domain specific accelerators. We can't just rely on general purpose processors. So now if you see, here is a very nice information. So uh, in, in 2002 or three, when feature size, so feature size is also called process technology node. So there were around 25 manufacturers which had leading edge production capability. In 2006 to 8, when it was 65 nanometer, many of those other, other manufacturers closed their shop. Now there are less than 15. Now here in 10 to 12, at 32 nanometer, there were just probably seven or eight. Now at 16 to 14 nanometer, only four foundries can do that. And even then, actually, if you if, if you if you have heard, actually, Intel is had, I mean, for, for many years, Intel had trouble to move from 10 nanometer to 7 nanometer. That caused huge, huge, huge loss to them. So, so you can't just make your transistor smaller and hope you can get performance. That's that was possible previously. Because it takes huge amount of money to construct a new fab. So, as you can see here, uh, people passed on. People crossed over 180 nanometer very, very fast, came, came down very fast. Now, 90 nanometer stayed for only very few, one and a half years or so. 65 nanometer stayed for very small time. But you can see 40 nanometer uh, for Intel, it took, it took a lot of time to cross, for them to cross. Similarly, 10 nanometer crossed, I mean, it took very time. Now, hopefully, they are probably moving to 7 nanometer. And for 3 nanometer, they are, Intel is going to TSMC. So in this way, you can see that you can't just keep on making your transistor smaller and get good performance. You have to really think about the problem and design specific accelerator for that problem. So this is the advances in processor performance. So number of transistors are increasing, no doubt. But single thread performance is not increasing. That means if you see the performance of single, single thread, that is probably same. So you have to use multi-threading or multiple cores. And uh, frequency is almost constant. Okay, in the, in the sense that it's not possible to simply increase the frequency. Okay, so uh, because as you increase the frequency, the so because if you increase the frequency, the power consumption increases super linearly. Okay, so that's why processor frequencies are almost fixed. For example, if you see Intel CPUs, their frequency is at most 3.2 gigahertz or maximum 3.6 gigahertz. Usually it is 2.6 or around 3 gigahertz. Whereas previously they were expecting that by this time they will have a frequency of processors as 10 gigahertz. It did not happen. Why? Because as you increase the frequency, power consumption becomes so much that it becomes in infeasible to operate a system. And if you see the uh, power in watts, typical power in watts, that is also fixed now. So you can't increase the power consumption because as you increase the power consumption, uh, you, have to, you have to dissipate that much amount of power. It becomes infeasible. Okay. And number of, but number of logical cores is increasing. So which it means that now you have to use multi cores or multi processors. Okay. So the, at least one, one most important point is that single thread performance is saturating. So now you have to use either multiple cores or you have to use accelerators. So here is a case in point. So I, I was mentioning AlphaGo. AlphaGo is a you know, software program written by Google's DeepMind, which defeated Lee Shadow, the world champion on Go. So, so actually, it's a very nice comparison. To train that AlphaGo needed more than 1200 CPUs and 176 GPUs and so many scientists. And actually to play one game of alpha of, of this Go, Google had to spend $3,000 in electricity bill. $3,000, okay? So, so that means, what does it mean, right? So it means that for, uh, but for a, you know, Stunt, stunt a game like this, it's, it's okay that, okay, a big company like Google can afford to spend $3,000. But what about common people like us? Can we afford it? No, right? We can't afford it. So that means we have to democratize this whole system 
which is possible only if it becomes cheap. So I'll give you an example. Like if you remember, uh, uh, in, in around 2005 or six, when I was somewhat a small kid, you know, there was this popular saying that if, if a rickshawala can have a mobile phone, then we will definitely accept that mobile phones are now very popular. And it actually happened, right? Nowadays, you know, people are purchasing mobile phones more than what their salary is. So, so okay, okay, anyway. My point is at least it is within the reach of people. So similarly, unless this AI becomes cheaper also, that means affordable for people, it will not become, you know, it will not penetrate the lives of people. It will not become democratic, like that in the sense of widely acceptable. So that's what happened actually from 176 GPUs, they, they designed TPU. So I will discuss the architecture of TPU. So you will, you will appreciate how you know Google came up with uh, architecture. Google is actually a software company, but they prefer to make their own architecture or accelerator because it, it helped them save the power consumption so much, right? From around 40,000 watt, they came down to 10,000 watt. That means four times saving in power. It's really very, very interesting. Okay, and then some of the other ones, they just take four TPUs and very less amount of power. So this shows a very, very compelling case that in the real world example of how if you design an accelerator, it, it saves you so much cost. And that's why no, no, that's when uh, no, uh, many, many companies are coming up with their own NPU. NPU is neural processing unit, just as we have CPU, GPU, uh, TPU is for tensor processing unit. So generic name for them is NPU is uh, neural processing unit. So Amazon has designed inferential which has systolic array architecture. TPU also has systolic array architecture. Alibaba has designed Ali NPU. Baidu has designed Kunlun and, and so on. MLU, IPU, GraphCore has designed. I, I will try to discuss their architecture if I get time. And of course, NVIDIA is probably designing most popular, most widely used GPUs. Uh, Huawei has designed SA and Apple. NVIDIA has designed NVIDIA, Intel has, Intel has designed so many of them. But most popular, most popular are probably NVIDIA and uh, uh, Google's TPU and, and and so on. Probably some of the some of the neural networks from uh, some of the neural computing systems from Intel also. So so in this way, you are seeing that it is not just conventional hardware design companies who are designing accelerators. Many many companies are designing accelerator for their own task, right? So. And here, another, another very, very interesting thing is that a broad range of accelerators have been designed. It is not that only for high performance or data center scale, even for chips, for mobile phones, or for very low power domain. Uh, that means just one watt to tens of milliwatts or hundreds of milliwatts in that range, then in mobile range or FPGAs, in, in data center or server scale, we have designed uh, this um, accelerators. Some of them use very low precision. Uh, some of them are chip card or system. Some of them are for inference. Some of them are for training. Okay. So in this way, you can see that a broad range of accelerators have been designed. So, so that, that piece, whatever optimization you do here, they will not apply here. Because the scale is different. The optimization targets are different. That the thinking which goes is completely different. Okay. So in this way, you have to see that it's extremely important to design accelerators and uh, many, many different types of optimization techniques are involved, so which, which go into the systems. 